what I mean, let's just take thought modification. What do I mean by thought modification? When I'm depressed, the minute I wake up and put my foot on the ground, I can have a voice that says, there's no point in getting out of bed. There's no point. I can put the other foot on the ground and, I, and a voice will say, I have nothing to look forward to. There's nothing going on in my life. I'm never going to be happy. I'm fat. I have nothing to do today. What am I going to have for breakfast? There's no food in the house. That's the barrage of thoughts you can have when you're depressed. And for many of us, they don't go away until we get the correct treatment. So what I've taught myself is a cognitive behavior type of response, which is where you respond to a saying, for example, I have no reason to get out of bed. So you respond to your, your, that thought and you say, that's crazy. I have a reason to get out of bed. I'm a human being and I'm going to get out of this bed. That's one form. But what I really believe in is that those voices that you hear, you have to counteract them by saying, this is an illness. I'm depressed. This is an illness. I'm depressed. So no matter what you go through and those thoughts are going through your head and you're hearing them all day long, you remind yourself that they're a symptom of an illness. And that's the number one thought modification tool that I use because I can't always get the thoughts to go away, but I can remind myself this is normal. I'm not crazy. I can live with this and still get on with my life. So that's one of the big tools that I use to write my books, to be with people, even though those voices are behind me saying terrible things. And I'm crying. Often I'm crying. And so I just keep going. That sounds like a very hard thing to do. I mean, if you're depressed, and, uh, you know, we can say you're probably not going to be that rational, wouldn't you mm -hmm. say? It's amazing how rational a person can be, especially when they're mildly depressed. For some reason in this society, we tend to think that depression shuts you down. Depression shuts down a lot of things in your body. I've been so depressed where I can't move. I have catatonic depression, and that's where I like my, let my mind take over, and I say, this is an illness. Anybody can treat the, teach themselves to say this is an illness. And the way you do that is to know what your own depression thoughts sound like. So if you're out there and you're like, I can't do this, Julie. You are different from me. I say, no, I'm not. Get out a piece of paper and write down the thoughts that you have when you're depressed. That's the first step. You don't have to feel good about it. Just write them down. The next time those thoughts come up, you get out that piece of paper and you go, oh, that's familiar. Oh, yeah, I remember having that thought. And that right there tells you that it's an illness, and that's the first step. The minute a person with depression can differentiate between themselves and what the illness makes them say and do, that's the first step to treating yourself, to getting things done, to going back into society. It might not mean the depression completely goes away, but it's the first step you can take. This is not me. Those thoughts are not me. I'm moving forward. This is depression. Anybody can do that, especially when the depression starts before it spirals out of control.